Hey everyone, this is a video tutorial showing you how to use Photomatix to combine bracketed images to create a toned map image, which is the first step in my HDR workflow. I was going to do a blog format, but I thought the best way would just be to do a video. Sometimes the fastest way to learn visually, I think. As a side note, I also have tried NIK's HDR FX Pro and also the Merge to HDR feature in Adobe Photoshop CS6, but I much prefer the way Photomatix Pro treats my images. Each company has their own code telling the software how to create a HDR image, and the results come out really differently for each program, so it's a matter of personal preference which one you choose, and for me it's actually Photomatix. I think it does the best job for my work. Photomatix Pro is $99 US, but since Photomatix appreciates my photography and the way I share it with everyone, they allow me to offer everyone else 15% off it. And it's not just Photomatix Pro, it's all their products as well. So I'll just quickly show you how to get there. You can go through my website, lukezeme.com, tutorials, and then just scroll down to my recommendations for DSLR and HDR photography and it's just on the software you need there, the Photomatix ones. Or you can just type it into Google, Photomatix. Just the first entry here, hdrsoft.com. And the actual options are under purchase. And there are all the different ones there. I'm using the top one, Photomatix Pro, and you can get a Windows or a Mac version. And I'll just show you how to get the discount. You can just get 15% off everything. $99. And you just type in the code Luke Seam Photography, one word. You recalculate and you can see it's taken off the discount. And you'd go through and finish off your purchase. Okay. So I think the best way now is to just show you how to use it. Alright, so we're just going to open Photomatix Pro now. Under Workflow Shortcuts you'll see a tab Load Bracketed Photos. You just left click that and then you'll go for Browse. Now wherever you saved your bracketed images, mine are in JPEG format, you can see here you select the ones in that series and then just click open click OK now I don't need to click align source images because I was using a tripod there's no need to remove ghosts because there's nothing moving in the image so if you had cars or people walking past you would select this and you have two options I might actually do an image with ghosts in it just to show you how to use it. And noise, you can reduce noise and chromatic aberrations if you find there's a lot in your images. So now you just click OK and you'll be shown your tone mapped image straight up. And there's a lot of settings that you're able to use to make it exactly the way you like it. There's also a bunch of presets that Photomatix offers just by clicking on these it'll bring up that setting that's the grunge there's even a black and white option which is pretty nice and again you can just change them the way you like with these sliders over here fusion okay so how I do it is it's like tone mapping and details enhancer. If you actually want to go to default down here, because it actually has the settings from the last time you edited an image, just go through each one till you get to the bottom. And there's also the lighting effects here if you want to bring those up. And advanced options down the bottom here micro smoothing, saturation highlights. Let's start at the top here. So you can see by using the strength slider how much it's applied to the five images that you've just combined. 
Generally I hang around this 60 to 70 mark. Having all these options allows you to sort of develop your own style and tastes and that's what you don't get from other software programs I think. So around the 60 mark. Next we'll move on to saturation. Also I like to go around 50 to 60 for this. 60 for a really colourful image. Which actually works in this one I think. We'll bring it down a little bit. The luminosity starts at zero as a default. You can see by increasing that it increases the light over the whole image. And then bringing it back down darkens it. So probably just bring it down just a little bit to darken up. Next is the detail contrast. Actually doesn't need too much. Yep, just a little bit above. Looks great down here. Lighting adjustments. This is my favourite slider in Photomatix Pro. So I know by experience all the way to the left brings light throughout the whole image. I'll just show it to you. And then all the way to the right kind of focuses the light in the areas that are already light and flattens out all the mid to tone to dark areas so you can see that I think we'll go for something like that smooth highlights bar this is for when you've had areas like say towards the sun and it becomes really blown out this is when you'll use this slider but I won't need it the white point brightens it up, so it's kind of like where your bottom mark is for white. And then it adds a percent of brightness onto that. It's a great little slider. So you can see I'll probably just increase a little bit the point. It's the same as the white point. It's where the bar is for your black level and then increases on that. Back to zero. You can just type in the number here if you want. It would be one point zero. Might just bring it down a little bit. Let's go for one point four. Temperature. It's whether it's warm or cool. So this is towards warm, and then down towards cool. But I'll just go back to zero again. And also have advanced options. Micro smoothing, saturation highlights, saturation shadows, shadow smoothness. Let's go back to two. And this is just how saturation highlights affects the image. It's just interesting to see how they all affect the image. Mm, that's really lovely right there, isn't it? Next, you just click process and we'll apply it to the entire image and you'll see a lot more detail in this next bit because the previous view is just kind of a preview I guess see how much more detail there is just all around oh yeah I shoot a Nikon D800 so there is a lot of detail to work with I actually could have done the selective ghosting tool I will have to when I do this image again. So you have to now save it. Don't forget to do that. And it just saves to the location of your bracketed images. Alright, so now what I might do is edit a photo with movement in it. So I can show you how to use Photomatic's ghosting tool and the manual options you get with it. But there's also the automatic option as well. Movement in these five from a temple in Japan. So I don't need to select the land source images because I used a tripod. Now here's the feature I'll show you: remove ghosts. So with selective deghosting tool. That's one way you do it manually yourself. It's just combining all the images into what is known as a tone mapped image. 
So I had my camera on a tripod, but because things were moving, the software can get a little confused in sections, so to fix it, we drag our mouse around the area that's ghosted, right click it, mark the selection as ghosted area, you can see a bit of ghosting in this couple over here. So what I like to do first now is right click it and then select which photo I want to use and I think I can see this. Yep, that one looks good. And then the same again over here. Yep. And then I go for zero. You can also zoom in at this point if you had like smaller areas of ghosting to find. Let's just come back up. Now preview just go to ghosting before you click OK and if you didn't like how it turned out you can see it's nice and sharp you could go back and select photos again and so I'll show you how that turns out so in here is our result and now we can edit the tone mapped image without having the ghosting in these figures that we saw before I should also start at default and again, it's just what you want in it. It's totally subjective, and each image will be different. You can't just apply the same one to every image. It just won't work like that. And I didn't actually know this woman. It just turned out that she was facing me. There was all these really large fish in the lake as well, which was fantastic. Like 50 centimeters, 60 centimeters. You can see a bit of halo coming along here when I increase the contrast. But you can always edit this out in Photoshop later in the workflow. Make your adjustments for the main parts of the foreground and then worry about the sky later in Photoshop. So we might increase the white point, that'll help a lot. So I'm just going through each adjustment slide and working out what I like best. Yeah, it's really intuitive process, which is kind of why I like it. I almost finished this one. Just have a look at the temperature. See if it needs changing. Maybe just slightly cool to give that sky a little bit of blue. And then finally we just click process and it will compile all the data into one image. Great, and just save that. And then I would use this tone mapped image along with the original images in a layered image in Photoshop. But that's the next part of the workflow. If you want to see my HDR workflow, you can just go to my website, bigzine.com, tutorials, and it's actually there under methods and materials. This is Ginza and Surface Paradise, and there they are, the videos there. They're also on YouTube.